Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 269 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I am Weston Pew. Today, we're going to venture over to Lake Highlands and look at 8256 Club Meadow Drive. It is a great house. Lots of extras that I did not expect when we took a look through mm -hmm. it. And in our second segment, we're going to talk about Real Estate Terminology 102, a continuation from last week. Lots of good information. But before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about what there is to do in May here in Dallas in the DFW area. So there are some really cool options. Uh, first of all is the Wildflower Mu Arts and Music Festival. I have been to this. It is great. They have really name, uh, uh, name recognition artists. Uh, they have small stages, they have big stages. It is really probably one of the best music festivals that I've had, I've seen in Dallas. Okay, so at first I wasn't sure if I'd been there, but I have, and I went and saw Jonathan Tyler and the Northern Lights yes, there. Yes, you did. Absolutely loved it. One of the great things also about this is that you can take the red line and it will drop you off right there. It's a three-day pass, also VIP. This is a great way to go and really see uh, another element of Dallas. And uh, the second thing that we wanted to talk about is the fifth annual Deep Ellum Wine Walk, and this is called Rosé Olé. Rosé Olé. So there's going to be 15 to 20 different participants in this. Hopefully our good friend Jeffrey Roberts and his plant store. Say the name, Jeff. Fibonacci. Fibonacci will be participating in this. It's a great way to see Deep Ellum, uh, have a drink while you walk. I always think that's really interesting. I did that. I did that in uh, the Bishop's Art District over the weekend, and actually, it was May the 4th be with you, and they were letting you walk around with beers. Really interesting. So it was different when you get to shop and walk around with drinks. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's a great thing. One of the other things, too, if you haven't, I, we put it in here. It may be too late. It is Mother's Day brunch. You had better plan ahead. If you are not familiar with uh, this, Dallas is one of those towns that likes to make reservations. Mm -hmm. You don't have a reservation, it can be really problematic. So we've got a list of a couple of them here for you to take a look at. I would say there's anything from Al mm -hmm. What would be one of your top picks? Uh, El Bolero is a okay. very casual uh, Mexico City style restaurant to go to that I think would probably do a very nice presentation. I'm always surprised that they don't put hotels on there because I feel like hotels really knock it out when it comes mm -hmm. to brunches and whatnot. We've been to Mother's Day brunch at uh, uh, the Anatole, the, the restaurant that's up on the, I think it's on the 17th floor. Interesting. That's beautiful views of downtown. That is great. We're going to switch gears real quick and we're going to head over to the Market Watch. So this is what we like to do. We like to take and look at what's happened over the last seven days in Dallas, strip away all the hype that the media is talking about, and really draw, drive this mm -hmm. home. One of the things we can also do this for zip codes, neighborhoods, and whatever else you're interested in, let us know, we can make that happen for you. So the coming soon's this week, we're down about 8%. There were still 83 coming soon listings in Dallas County. Uh, the new active listings were up 10%, which is what we like to see this time of year. There were 595 new listings in Dallas County last week. And in option period, that is the first status that a, a, a property may go into when it's under contract. And it's that period where buyer does inspections, you negotiate repairs, the, those were down 8%, but there were still 339 that went into option period last week. So after the buyer and the seller have come to an agreement and they have moved past the op option period, we move into the pending status. And this is actually down 2%. Which isn't surprising because we're starting a brand new month and things typically close at the end. Also, we're seeing that solds, solds are really up. Mm -hmm. So they're up 18%. This is just what happens when you get to the end of the year. This is like carryover from last week. So that is actually up 64 units to 413. Now, mortgage rates actually went down. So we're just a hair over 7%. This information is from Optimal Blue. You can actually go there to the website. It's really great. Look at all the different rates that they have for Jumbo, FHA. Mm -hmm. Historical sliders allow you to see really what's happening. So really great way to figure out what's happening. And as they say, date the rate, marry the mortgage. Yeah. Um, it's married the house, date the mortgage. Not what date I the rate. I said date the rate. You said date the rate, right, yeah. She don't marry the mortgage, you marry the house. Same thing. <laughs> Let's talk about 8256 Club Meadow Drive. This is over in zip code 75243. This is a four bedroom, three bath, two car garage, just a little bit over 2,600 square feet, priced at 779,000. And I was really surprised at, at 
the just all that you get with this house. Yeah, it's a really it's really just a, a great location. It is right across from Henry Moss Park. That is, uh, uh, you can jump on that. The the White Rock Trail goes through that. Mm -hmm. If you want to ride through there and ride all the way out to LBJ, you can ride there. You can also connect with the North Haven Trail if you want to. One of the things that really kind of like, aside from the schools that kind of helped this little pocket uh, really blossom, I think is the fact that Diane Cheatham started Urban Reserves and that really took off and really helped some of those houses in this area renovate to a different level maybe that they weren't accustomed to. Also, there's the great Buddhist temple over here that mm -hmm. has the Sunday, I think that's what I'm doing. Oh, no, it's yeah. Mother's Day. I'm not doing that anyway. <laughs> great area over there. This is an easy north-south. You're able to jump on Royal, which will take you um, right up to 75, allows you to get on and off really quickly. Also, dart rail connection points if you're heading into downtown are super accessible from this. If you're not from Dallas, look a little further. Jump on 635. 635 heading west will take you to the north entrance of DFW Airport, um, and that's a really great way to get in and out. I feel like we talk about this to clients all the time, especially with the ones that are coming in from California, and tell them how nice it mm -hmm. is to have two different airports, whether it's DFW or it's left field. And they're just, they're 20 minutes apart. But they're amazing. Yeah, it re really is. Um, some things to do in the area. There is a, a bar called One Nostalgia. West has been there. So this is a great, dive local only bar bartenders are great it is super simple easy to get in it doesn't really get going till about 11 11 30 and then all of a sudden it's like the floodlights come on one of the things that they are known for is they are known for karaoke and one night we went with a bunch of our friends and they got up there and karaoke and i have to tell you jill really like set the house on fire did and she, really? she did wow she started singing um don't go breaking my heart and she got off the stage took the mic and she would sing a little bit and then she'd hand it off to have like one of the members in the crowd participate uh -huh. it was and elton john and kiki d i was like look <laughs> at her and she's the most laid back it girl ever uh -huh. but put a karaoke uh, if you go there you have a great time one of the things also that we think is trending dumplings mm -hmm. and there's a brand new maybe not brand new but hello dumpling is over there hello dumpling is over by another one of my favorite restaurants Walkstar. um i wonder if they're owned by the same people I have to look into that but if you love dumplings whether pan seared or steamed great location if you don't really like that i don't know what's wrong with you you can do ramen mm -hmm. but they have really great opportunities um and the other thing too jeff noticed that you can also order online yeah i think i think i'm going to try to order from there i would love that tell me when i'll be um, here the, and the last thing we want to talk about is the Dallas Swim Lady. And this is a, a woman who gives one-on-one -on -one, uh, summer classes in an accelerated, fast-paced format. The other thing, too, if you're in that getting ready for the summer, this is a great thing to reserve because Lake Highlands is going to really eat this up. This is based out of White Rock North School in Lake Highlands. Classes are indoors in a heated pool, and she has over 3,000 students that she can name. Wow. So let us know, Swim Lady, she's got you covered. I think she is calling there. So let's talk about the property. Do so it. this is 8256 Club Meadows Drive, and it's in Lake Highlands, Richardson School District. Really such charming drive up on this. I was really, I was excited to see this in the house. Sometimes you go, oh, the photos are better in the house. This all works seamlessly together. There is a place for everyone in this house the topography on this is really great. If you've ever lived on a house that sits above the street, you will love that, and this is one of those houses. The other neighbors on the other side, one of them has actually built a little deck out, so there's a lot of neighborhood pride. A lot of people are taking care of their homes. This is not one that's gonna be overly improved, so you don't have to worry about that if you're kind of concerned about where you are in pricing. This is definitely a front porch neighborhood with the, uh, the, the small front porch. You've got so much outdoor space on this house, it's nuts. But you've got these really cool uh, leaded glass entry doors on the front, which just kind of welcome you into the foyer, which a lot of ha homes have gotten away from having that little landing space inside. So as you're going to notice throughout this house, they have done an impeccable job with the actual fit and finish of the house. Whether it's the colors, the flooring, they have figured it all the way out. So as we transition from that front room, which can also double as an office, you see here, this is the family room, and it actually has an excellent view of the pool, which is always important. 
but it has high vaulted ceilings. And it also, when we're gonna pivot around, you're gonna notice that it works with the rest of the house in a very seamless and effortless way. Again, the flooring on this, I couldn't get over how well it worked with this. And this is the transition into that dining room we were kind of mentioning. And you know, it's a, uh, it, it is a, a 1970s home, but it's really got 2020 vibes with the way that they're using the space where you've got the kitchen that's open to the dining room, that's open to the family room. And this kitchen's done beautifully. Quartz countertops, white cabinetry. I love that they utilized this side of the, uh, this side of the kitchen with those little shelves, the wooden shelves up there, gives you a little bit of extra space without really overcrowding that area. One of the things also to point out, this is what we would call like a 70s style home. After mid-century modern, 70s style homes become really popular because they lend themselves so well to today's uh, buyers and what we were looking for. This one that has everything inside of it handled. So as Jeff was saying, quartz, you've got the nice clean tile on the backsplash, gas cooktop, island with the microwave little notes double oven that you see there as well they've also taken into consideration that island highlight it put a little paint on it it goes the distance this is the bedroom downstairs i thought this was a really smart bedroom uh, because it looks over the front yard which is great but it also has its own bathroom great bathroom is the way that it was fit and finished uh, a walk-in closet too and this is the the bath that is uh, connected to that bedroom with the walk-in shower uh, single vanity, uh, really just uh, very clean and very spacious. I, I like the way they cut the glass right there and let the actual seat come past that. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to jump upstairs and this is the master bedroom or primary bedroom. Very, very large, great light. This is actually um, on the back over the garage. Um, lots of extra elements here. This is either a seating room or as you see here, this is the way they've set it up as an office. I will tell you, with that much light, you're never going to have a problem staying motivated and focused. A lot of times we get confused about how dim they get, mm -hmm. and then you walk out onto this. And it's such a great use of the outdoor space. They uh, brought turf grass in, so you, you feel like you're uh, in a green environment year-round, but really just excellent use of the space over the garage. I also like the fact that you, they have the stairs that actually will allow you to walk down into the backyard, mm -hmm. which is a really great transition from the up to the down. It makes it much more inviting. Uh, a lot, whether it's drinking wine or really just hanging out, this is a great. This is going to be the master bathroom, as you see here. Double vanities, space there for seating. Uh, I like the fact that the actual sconces are through the mirrors, which is a nice element. And this is your walk-in shower. Walk-in showers like this, I'm happy with. I will tell you that a lot of times we see builders come back and they have three to four sides of glass. That is a nightmare to clean. Mm -hmm. This is perfect and works. And this is another one of the bedrooms upstairs. This is on the front of the home. One of the things that we haven't mentioned that are throughout this house are the plantation shutters. And that really uh, helps you control the light that's coming in if you've got, uh, like in this instance where you've got a child and uh, they probably need to be able to darken that room during nap time. And this is the bath that's attached, double sink vanity there, uh, traditional step-in tub shower behind that. So that was the Jack and Jill that connects bedroom one to bedroom two. And then this has a little step out, maybe slightly bigger than a Juliet, but not much. This is over the front house. You saw the, the gates, I'm sorry, the railing here. Again, this allows you to see up and down the street, how everything is working. Kind of gives you the orientation of how this all flows. All in all, this house has a lot of extra features. One of the things now that we're about to do is we're about to take a look outside. And you've got it's more covered outdoor space here. So you have so much room to do really everything outdoors that you would want. I'd agree with that. I think that the house lends itself for uh, entertaining, uh, that you've got a room for everyone, outdoor space. So if you get tired, whether it's up on the top, uh, this pool is large, nice shade tree. Mm -hmm. If you're not from Texas, understand that those pools can get warm. This pool has the depth and the shade that will keep it cool and refreshing year round. And that is so important when it gets ready to be August. So this is 8256 Club Meadows Drive. It's a four bedroom, three bath, two car garage built in 1977. It's 2,634 square feet. And it's priced at $779, which is $295 a square foot. And we want to say thank you so much to Jason Bates 
for allowing us to feature this home. If this home is something that you'd like to look at, click on the link and you'll be able to look at all the photos that we didn't use. If you'd like to take, and take a look at that, let us know and we'd be happy to make that happen. And with that, we'll be right back. Did you know there are a lot of ways you can keep up with us? For starters, every Wednesday at noon, we host Sold with Updike Pew, live from our Facebook and YouTube channels. Our show is dedicated to featuring some of the best homes in the Dallas market and about sharing timely information about market trends. But don't worry if you miss the show because you can always listen to them on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. Still want more? Follow us on Instagram where you get a first-hand look at what it's like to be a realtor. It's not always previewing homes for clients or getting them ready to go live in MLS. Lastly, visit our website and you'll be able to create a custom home search tailored specifically to your wants and needs that's timely and accurate. Whether it's square foot, location, or the neighborhood, we have you covered. If you'd like to know how much your home is worth, we can help with that too. Just visit homeprice.fyi, enter a few pieces of information like your home address, and we'll email you a price. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be Realtors for Life. Hi everybody, welcome to the second segment, episode 269 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Weston Pew. And so today we thought we'd take a little dive down real estate terms 102. I feel like it's funny that we're doing this as everyone is graduating. I feel like this should have been segments <laughs> that we worked at when everybody started school, but the hell with it, you've got summer school. So let's talk about this because you're buying houses right now and you need to know. You need to know. Expansive soils, if you're not from Texas and don't have that, and some of you are very lucky and come from areas that have lots and lots of rock. We not so much. We have expansive soils, meaning that when moisture, rain come and go, that the soil will contract or expand. And what that does is that really pitches on your um, foundation and can wreak havoc throughout the house. A lot of times the newer construction homes have got this figured out by actually going deeper below, looking for solid um, substrates to connect to. Um, they also do uh, the new foundations that they do, um, allow them to have a post tension, which tighten up and can actually help them to float as a monolithic piece on top of that expanding soil. Um, the biggest thing to remember, expansive soil, don't let it wash away. Yeah. Those keep, are the takeaways. Keep it, so keep, keep soil consistency around your house the same all year long. All year long. So the uh, second term is one that you probably won't hear much about, but it's called FERPTA. And FERPTA is the Foreign Investment in Real Estate Property Tax Act of 1980. And what it, the purpose of it basically is if a, if a seller is a foreign person, it is the buyer's responsibility to collect up to 15% of the seller's proceeds and remit that to the IRS. Wow. Yeah. But that would be done in title, correct? It would be done at the time of title. So yes. it's kind of scary when you say it's up to the buyer to do that. It's really the title work's going to pull the paperwork together and then everybody signs on in Greece. It, it, I, well, I mean... It, the title company is going to facilitate it, but it Correct. is the buyer's responsibility. Right, to say, hey, yeah. I need the yeah. additional 15%, because right. no seller's gonna be like, oh, because then you're on the hook for that 15. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about flood insurance. So there are maps, the FEMA maps, that you will be able to look at that get updated from time to time. Um, these should be also, um, if you're buying a house, you can also ask the current um, owner mm -hmm. if they have flood insurance, but Flood insurance is one of those things that I would definitely pick up because how long, flood insurance is one of those things that doesn't go into effect the minute you buy it. It has like, um, don't you have six, um, you I can't think like. It, it goes into effect if you're buying it as you purchase the property, but I, if you're just buying it to buy it, okay. I think there's a, a period of time before it actually goes into effect. So like if you know that there's a big flood, a big rainstorm coming mm -hmm. and you live on the creek. right. You can't buy it two days before the <laughs> right. it shows up. Yeah. So think about that and buy it when you when you first get your house. And the next two terms are, are kind of melded into one. It's historic districts and conservation districts. In the in the city of Dallas, we actually have historic mm -hmm. districts, we have conservation districts, and we also have neighborhood overlays. And 
they just get a little more restrictive as you go along. Neighborhood overlays uh, traditionally try to keep the, the, the continuity of the, the general continuity of the neighborhood. Uh, conservation districts are a little bit more strict because those usually have a lot more governance and control of what the outside of the home looks like. And then when you move into a historic district, that's really the, the most, uh, probably the, the most controlled environment because they are trying to retain the historic properties of that home. But that information is all provided to you before you actually mm -hmm. execute the contract. You have a set number of days that you're going to allow, be allowed to review. Um, but those conservation and historic districts, they have a lot of, they can have a lot of control over what you can do to the exterior of yes. that house. Yes, yes. A lot. Yes. From that, paint to windows. That's correct. And beyond. That is correct. Winnetka Heights, Winnetka Heights, I believe, even has approved paint colors, if I'm not mistaken. I would agree with that. I think Munger is the same way. Yeah. So one of the things also, inspection, repairs, and walkthroughs. These are key elements. This is, these are performed during option periods. Mm -hmm. We help facilitate these with our clients by hiring the best inspectors, by piggybacking on whether we need, know we need plumber, electricians, HV, VAC, all to correspond as close to the beginning mm -hmm. of that option period so that we can make the best um, decisions whether moving forward and then also make sure that compensation both in repairs and monetary are adjusted for the seller or the buyer. So the, uh, the next is Mandatory Owners Association and this is another item that you would, if you're purchasing a home, you would be, you would have that disclosed to you up front before you even made an offer and uh, these are also, these are, are uh, different from the historic and conservation districts because the, the historic and conservation are controlled by the city. The mandatory owners associations are actually controlled by an HOA board, which is a board put together of the owner property owners in the, the neighborhood. It's a thankless job, but it is an important job. Um, it, and you just this is another one where you need to read the documents that you that we're going to send you and make sure you understand all of the restrictions that you might have in that neighborhood. Because Texas is tough. It is, and especially when you get into some of the suburban neighborhoods where um, you know you, keep, you can't park your car in, the, in your driveway. You have to park it in the garage. You have to have the garage door closed. I mean, it's... And there are also some of those areas like in um, Las Colinas that have multiple HOAs layering yeah. up. Yeah, Valley so Ranch. So it can get really, it can be interesting. And don't go thinking you can just throw anything you want in that backyard because mm -hmm. it's in the backyard. Mm -hmm. They will come knocking on your door and find you. We've got some of our really good realtor friends that learned that the hard mm -hmm. way, didn't they? Yeah, they and they did. don't play around with that those fees. Many of them don't. Mineral rights. Last word for the day. Mineral rights. So I would, <laughs> so this is one of the funny ones. In the city, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get them. That's just, I would say, if anybody asks, I had a guy at the closing table kind of get frustrated. He's like, said something about mineral rights. And I said, you're not going to get those ever. Those have been long ago taken. Um, mineral rights are more when we see uh, ranch land mm -hmm. taken care of. I will say this much. That is one of the very interesting things that they can separate from the sale of the land. Mm -hmm. So they can say we keep, retain all or a portion of the mineral rights. So that is something to really think about and can really affect the value of that property. It became really important here, uh, more toward the the northwestern part of the the metroplex, because there were uh, when there was a lot of fracking mm -hmm. going on, there were pockets of of that gas that they were getting out, and so our uh, state realtor association even developed a, an addendum to go with it, so that it was very clearly disclosed to a buyer. Um, and to a seller that they were either giving up the mineral rights or they were retaining the mineral rights. All very important because that is a lawsuit waiting to happen. It is. So you hope you found these helpful. We'll do 103 in the next coming weeks and we'll work our way through the alphabet. And then just remember, we want to be a Realtors for Life.